Hi everyone, and thank you to join the second free online EOS IO Swiss workshop. Today we will dive into three short interviews, three strategic questions with builders in the blockchain ecosystem. First guest, Stefan Bisson, co-founder of the EOS Nation Block Producer and leader of the Ambassador Program. Followed by our first session on the EOS Nation tools about EOS Detective, ERP, Blocktivity, Block Producer Validator, Proxy Nation, X Nation, and the first scratch about the web tool. Followed by our second guest, Pavel Jakovlev, Crypto Valley Lab Strategic Advisor in the Crypto Valley in Switzerland. Followed by our second session on the DAPS, Blocks.io, Scatter, Sentchat, and Valley Above Proof. And finally, our third guest, Eyal Erzo, co founder of Bancor Network. Followed by third session, Local Development Multi Operating System about account creation, custodian and custodian, curl command to query a smart contract table of the dweb.eosn uh, smart contract behind dweb for the operator EOS nation. And then we will combine the curl command into PHP script to deploy on EOS blockchain Switzerland and to see how to interact with dweb. Finally, EOS JavaScript uh, to, to see the, how to interact from your browser with the NeoSIO network. And we will see how to install uh, best practice. And beside that, we will see also Node.js TypeScript installation. So this entire Swiss workshop is about two hours. You will be able to ask your question uh, during the live on the free panel side. This is totally anonymous and we will answer you after the workshop. The video, the video will be available as a YouTube video and you will have into the description of the video a link to a mind map with all the topics and all the links that we discussed. So, thank you to join and now let's go. And I am now with Stefan Bisson. He is the co-founder of EOS Nation. Hello, Stefan. Thank you to be here with us. This is a very pleasure. I will introduce a little bit Stefan Bisson. I was in contact with him uh, at uh, the beginning of the, the adventure on EOS ecosystem. Uh, I was coming an ambassador in uh, October 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, since then, um, we have decided to uh, create an initiative about the workshops and I name it EOSIO Swiss Workshop and I choose EOS Nation as a partner for these workshops and for me today the opportunity to speak with him and also that the community understand not only EOS Nation on the technical side but also on other um, educational uh, side. Uh, is the purpose of the EOS Nation Ambassador Program that you have uh, created and that you lead now? What is the purpose? Great, thanks. Thanks for the question, Patrick. Thanks for having me on and including me in your workshop. Um, so the purpose of the EOS Nation Ambassador Program is to promote adoption of EOS through education. So we've built a team of uh, 15 ambassadors right now. We had we had more before, some left, some came, some are more available sometimes, some other get busy. It's a very fluid program. And what we try to do is we try to empower our ambassadors all over the world with excellent information and the resources they need to educate their community about EOS and promote adoption. So Patrick is one of our most uh, active ambassadors right now, and he's demonstrating this model of adoption through, through education by hosting a lot of a lot of meetups and workshops such as this one so really uh, and we have ambassadors all over the world who each contribute in their own way and if you're interested in joining our program um, you can always uh, apply to the ambassador program visit our website which patrick will share later and, and you can find the link out there thank you very much thank you very much for this first question uh, very accurate as, as always uh, second question that i have for you stefan uh, it's about um, what are the, the EOS, uh, what are EOS token holders' values, and how 
uh, have they evolved over time? Sure. The, the network has been launched for uh, two years now. Uh, and over that time, we did see uh, a pretty clear evolution of the token holder value. So at first, the network launched, there was no reward for voting. Um, and over time, we saw a shift in token holder preference that uh, expressed their interest in earning rewards in exchange for their votes, which is something that is very common on all proof of stake and delegated proof of stake networks. At first, EOS was trying to avoid that through an arbitration body that was called ECAP. However, uh, token holders rejected that idea. And, um, and since then, we've seen uh, the proliferation of reward proxies. EOS Nation, um, it, uh, we offer a reward proxy as well. You can visit it at proxy.eosnation.io. And then if you give us, if you vote for our proxy, in return, we share our rewards uh, with you. The other evolution in the values that we've seen is uh, the willingness for token holders to accept that when they deposit their EOS on exchanges, those exchanges now own the voting rights to those EOS. Now, that's certainly not a consensus among the entire network. Many people are still uh, very much reticent to accept that these centralized exchange have a um, pretty high uh, amount of stake weight and influence over the network. However, uh, many token holders are fine. Ourselves, EOS Nation, we wrote about this issue more than two years ago before the network launched when Bitfinex announced their candidacy as a block producer. Um, we wrote an article entitled, Through Diversity, Strength Emerges. So, you know, uh, us as a block producer, we, we have a lot of community in initiatives. And we do a lot of things that Bitfinex doesn't do. But Bitfinex does a lot of things that EOS Nation doesn't do either having a, a, a world-class exchange, providing liquidity, market making, all of these things are very important to the ecosystem. And we've seen a shift uh, in token holder values to, to, more, to be more accepting of these exchanges. And the largest token holder in the network, Block One, recently started voting. And in their early voting selection, they did include some exchanges as well, which shows that they also see the, the, uh, uh, the importance for exchanges to be part of this ecosystem. Yeah, and a sub-question to that, uh, what are the criteria that you choose when you, when you have to, to make a selection of block producer in your proxy? Yeah, exactly. So we've been involved intimately in the ecosystem since before the launch. Ma many block producing teams, uh, you know, EOS is just one part of their business. While us at EOS Nation, it is our only business and we focus all of our attention to EOS every day. So we have a very intimate uh, knowledge and relationship with all the, all the players in the ecosystem. So when we vote for um, a block producer, we, it's because we've interacted with the team, we've talked with them, uh, we've developed a relationship with them and we see the benefit that they bring. And, and like I mentioned in my previous answer, we want, to, we want to support a wide range of block producers. So that includes exchanges, that includes more indie BP teams uh, like us and others. And, and um, we try to include a variety in, in geographical locations and, okay. and those types of uh, concerns are what we consider when uh, voting for block producers. What are the project in the EOS ecosystem that EOS Nation is currently working on? We're working on actually quite a few tools now. Um, some we worked in the past and are, are up and running, such as EOS Detective, which allows users to easily and, and quickly visualize where tra token transfers um, occur on the network, and you can follow the token from one account to another. We've also developed a BP validator tool which allows, which allows users to see which services are offered by which BP. So let's say you want to see who offers history services. Well, you can you know, click that check mark and it'll list you the BPs that offer uh, history. There's also a new wallet API that was just released, which we're uh, promoting. A and then so then we added a, a little tab for that wallet API to allow you to see um, which BPs are offering those services. Another, nice. another service that we didn't build uh, but that we are now hosting is the e, uh, EOS Resource Planner. So this was built by EOS New York, 
But when they got hired from block one, they, they stopped their block production operation and, and they offered us the, uh, the code to see if we wanted to host it. So, so we're now hosting and this allows people to go see how much resources currently cost on EOS. Hey, if I want to, if I need X amount of CPU for my DAP, how much is that going to cost me? So those types of, those types of uh, questions can be answered on that, at that tool. Uh, mm -hmm. We also have, we've also built the smart contract backing the blocktivity.info statistics that we see. So when we see, um, you know, EOS is doing 150 million actions per day and, and all those types of statistics, they come from blocktivity, which comes from a, uh, the work that they needed building these smart contracts to compile all that data. So those are some of the earlier tools we worked on that are up and running. And then more recently, we've also started working on more DeFi type of tools. So our, fir our, our first product that could be considered a decentralized finance was our proxy, where it is all managed by smart contracts. People who vote for our proxy automatically get daily rewards sent back to them. And you can even customize your rewards and stuff. And, and all of that is on sharing, transparent, and like I said, managed by smart contracts. Um, mm -hmm. More recently, we launched the xnation.io platform, which allows users to trade tokens for, 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 for which allows users to trade tokens. You can see the uh, tokens on Ethereum as well as on EOS. So it's a, it's a very powerful platform that shows the various liquidity pools that uh, exist on, on EOS and on Ethereum. Uh, yeah, in the um, X Nation that's use uh, Bancor network, right? That's right. We've been working with them with, to build some of their services, including uh, X Nation. So definitely X Nation is powered by Bancor. And yeah. um, we're, we're big fans of, of the Bancor relays. Well, what used to be called Bancor relays now are called uh, liquidity pools, which is a more accurate term, I think. And finally, our latest tool is uh, DWeb which Patrick, I know you're a big fan of, and you've been pretty active on the platform recently. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail on that because I know you will um, later on in this presentation. Exactly, so thank you very much, Stefan. And also thank you for hosting these workshops. I know a lot of people appreciate them. I know a lot of people learn a lot. And you know, this is the definition of adoption through education. Thank you, Stefan, nice. All right, thank have you. Good, have a good workshop, everyone. Thank you. Okay, bye. So, eosdetective.io. Okay. Page to login or to create an account. Okay, so I will log in, sign in. I can go with my, my socials, Google or GitHub or you put your email password so i will use directly my account google let's use firebase behind the tool i use my email my social and i am in and i am automatically connected on to the eos mainnet i can change to go on boss and soon we will have wax we will have maybe others network coming you have the language okay here we are on the dashboard that's showing you some metrics on block processed blocks on chain number of blocks that, that are unprocessed a number of of total transfer uh, out and in and the number of accounts on this particular network and all that for this particular date and time this is constantly refreshed now i go in the network graph to show you transfers and here i will enter for example my account i do a search and i have my account here in the middle okay of the screen and if i single click on my account i see all what i have doing with my account very easy out in and by default in aggregated view so accumulated or i can go in single transaction now 
if I want to see what I have sent to an another account, so from NCO blah 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 to dweb.usn, I see all what I have transferred to this account. Always with the transaction ID, with the memo that you have put, and at which time and which date and time. Very easy. So you click the arrows, you see the sense of the arrow, what you have sent, what you have received. The circle in red, that's account that you cannot query because they are too much uh, transaction in. That will be a mess to process. So when you try to click on, you receive a warning. Okay, it's normal. Uh, now, if you want to add an, at this graph, an another account. Let's say I have sent something to EOS USA, DWeb, this account here. If you double click on this circle here, okay, that will add a new graph with all the relationship with this account. Okay, if you double click once again, you come back to this view. Okay, so very easy. Single click, you querying, querying the, 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 the account. Okay, double click, you add this node to the existing visualization. So now erp.eosnation.io, that's the EOS resource planner that was initially uh, provided by uh, EOS New York. Shout out to uh, Kevin, La Kevin Rose of EOS New York. And recently that was given to EOS Nation and EOS Nation is uh, operating this, uh, this tool. So this tool show you what, uh, what is the cost of one EOS in uh, USD currently. Uh, you have all the indication here on the top. Uh, what is the price of the RAM for kilobyte? Uh, what is the bandwidth uh, in kilobyte per day? And uh, what is the CPU, CPU price in microsecond per day? And you have an explanation on the RAM, the bandwidth, uh, the network bandwidth, and the CPU bandwidth, how it works. Okay? Here you have a network statistic uh, overall, what is available, what is already reserved, and uh, the block producer there, there, there will manage the available RAM and add additional capacity when it is needed. And now let's say you want to calculate. So you have a calculator here. On the left side, what can I afford here? What will it, what will it cost? And let's say you have to buy uh, one mega of RAM, you can change here the measure in byte, kilobyte, megabyte, gigabyte, and you say, I want one mega, okay, that's cost that in USD or in EOS, okay, you can change easily. Uh, now, let's say I have to, to buy also, uh, I need per day what could be cost. 5 mega per day of bandwidth okay and CPU okay okay and you have the price okay so very easy let's that is very useful if you are a developer and you need to, bu to, to buy RAM for your smart contract, and you don't know what could be the price, you go on this page, you have an ID. Blocktivity.info. And this website is uh, behind, managed by a smart contract that counts the, the activity by token, main token, or other token, okay? 
let's say for EOS, you have the EOS mainnet, you have Telos, you have uh, Wax, so you will see Wax in this table in 13 position. We have both in 20 position here. So this table is showing how it's performing each of these uh, uh, token and uh, it's calculated in operation. Okay. You have the activity is measured in operation. Always for the last 24 hours. Huh? Here you have a column with the transaction number of transaction in the last 24 hours. And you have other columns. You see how it's performing. 2% uh, more now in the seven day. We have gained 2% with EOS uh, in general on this line for EOS token. Uh, we have gained uh, a benefit of 2%. On all these uh, metrics, uh, you can add the protocol colon, and you see what what protocol is using uh, DPoS version two by EOS mainnet by Telos by Tron is also using DPoS etc. So you see the protocol, very easy to change. After that, you have graphics showing you the number of operations made by the major blockchain and you see that um, that uh, EOS is competing very well against the other uh, blockchain. You have another graphic also on the market cap. Okay, so it's a website very intuitive. And uh, I encourage you to, to read the fact that explain you very well what is the difference between transaction and operation. DP validator, so it's validate.eosnation.io and several menus, an about, so a fact where you can understand in detail how it's working, the, the, this tool. So it's very easy. I will just point some functionality of this tool that I find very interesting. Uh, I go in the producer scorecard and I choose the EOS mainnet, for example. There are other networks, you see, but I will choose the EOS mainnet. Okay. And in this orange box, you have different criteria, okay, that you can uh, combine together. Let's say I will do a research of the top 21, and I am interested by the last feature Named API Wallet. Okay, so yes, and I obtain that there are two BPs, block producers, in the top 21 that have this uh, feature installed okay and in the entire bp ecosystem we have eight bps that have this uh, you see this wallet this api wallet okay there are other uh, combination that you can do but basically this is where you go when you want to do some um, uh, selection criteria based on this criteria so it's the producer scorecard then you have the reports that's also very interesting so I go into the EOS mainnet and I am interested to see as a developer for example I am interested to communicate with EOS nation for example block producer by using their API so I go on endpoint here and I see that the EOS nation here that they are in three uh, ranking three I see that's the API API HTTP okay we have also API API HTTPS 2 that's all the APIs. Huh? And now let's say I am interested to communicate with the API HTTP. 
OK. And by the way, I see which version of the EOS I open source software EOS Nation has installed, version 206. So this is for this reason that we had before the, the API uh, wallet uh, feature, because that is coming with this version. And it is exactly the website that you, the, a developer has to use, HTTP, API, .eosn .io, if you want to communicate with the, the by programmation, by programming, uh, with the, that's a way to communicate with the, uh, with the, the blog producer, uh, EOS Nation, by using this uh, API. Go back to the reports. Let's say, always for the EOS Minnet, I am interested to have a list of the country. And by country, I see which BP are in each country. For example, in Australia, there is Gener OS, Eosphere. Let's go in to my Canadians. We have Eos Cafe Block, Eos Nation. In Switzerland, we have a block producer in 120 position. Shout out to Eos Geneva. This can be obtained in a file, okay? For example, a JSON file here, or a text file. So let's say you have this file here, and you see that you have this URL. And by using this URL from a program that you are developing, for example, you can uh, always be up to date with the, the, the block producer in the different country, and you can do a uh, kind of statistic. Why not? Why not? Okay? So this tool is very uh, powerful and it is developed by EOS Nation. Matthew Darwin, uh, the, the DevOps of the EOS Nation block producer. Uh, this tool was very useful to, to, to check all about the the BP uh, uh, requirement if all is okay with the BPs. Okay? So I will let you dive into this tool. It's very intuitive. Okay? Okay, now let me show you how to install the scatter desktop. So it's very easy, you go on github.com, get scatter, scatter desktop, releases. So this link is available into the mind map with other information about scatter that will be available after the workshop in a mind map, okay? With the video published. So now you are on this repository, get scatter, scatter desktop you see that the latest release is the version 12.1.1. So you choose then your operating system. Myself, I am based on Windows. So I have already downloaded the scatter and I have not the version two, version 12.1.1. I have another version. That doesn't matter. It's always the same principle. Okay. But it's always good to be update, to be a jour. So to be always uh, up to date, so you will always install the correct uh, the correct uh, version. Okay. So now I have already my version scatter running. I have already installed. I have already uh, started, and I have already uh, identity named exploration. I go into. I can change the name here. Okay. So let's say you name your identity exploration. Then the first step, you have to add your account, EOS account. I will explain you how to create an EOS account after that. But let's say you have already an EOS account. So you put your EOS account. Remember that the EOS account is 12 positions. So that's the EOS account that you have created. But it's 12 positions and it is A to Z for the letter and one to nine for the numbers. Okay, so very easy. You enter your EOS account. 
okay let's say it don't permit me to add because i have already uh, sorry and see you et voilà. okay so i can add this account but i have already done okay so you have to to enter your account name you add it when it is done you see that it is linked all is okay perfect you go back you click on the identity and you see here there are no apps connected for them at the moment so you can connect some dApps. so let's say we will connect we will connect blocks .io, hein, the block explorer blocks i click i open blocks okay he opened for me the, the application blocks.io and he show me a little icon here on the top scatter okay i click login and i have to connect now the blocks.io with my scatter so i choose scatter i will have a confirmation pop-up that will come that's the pop-up here this window and you say login okay that's take a while and you see on the top the account name is showed parenthesis active that's mean that's the active permission of this account that is used because when you are uh, working on the EOS uh, ecosystem, on a particular EOS blockchain, EOS IO blockchain, uh, blockchain, EOS IO based network, here we are on the EOS mainnet connected. Let's use the active permission. And we are connected with Scatter. We see that because here, you see, he recognize, I can remove, but now I am connected with the Scatter with this account name okay that's mean when i go into my scatter and i change off uh, identity and i come back on the identity exploration i should see blocks okay it is here and now let's say i want also to connect another another um, block explorer named eosx eosx I open to and here you will say but where is the icon scatter and this is the opportunity for me to explain you something when you are connecting a connecting a dap with your scatter that's need only the scatter when you will do something into this dap that is that will do a transaction on the eos mainnet and what is doing a transaction on the on the eos mainnet into this explorers that's what that's the wallet okay on blocks.io this is different because this is the ui is different it is showing directly on, for you on the top that you are connected with scatter you see that uh, at the first look you see that but you will need that only when you we will go into wallet okay so on eos x you have to go on wallet you say transfer token and it is here that you can connect your scatter and you will connect here okay And you will go back on to the identity and you will see that what that you have now two applications so now scatter is aware so blocks.io so you are just to go on the url blocks.io i will dive into the this block explorer but you will have also in the mind map some links to some guides of blocks.io so i will not spend too much time on blocks.io i just want to point some basic things so 
remember you have the scatter that is already running it is already uh, behind uh, in your uh, different uh, application in your operating system so it is running and now you just have to be sure that you are well connected so that's the case we are connected because we can do logout and also because that we see that the the account is here okay and it is also display here on the top so you, when you are in this login uh, window here in this uh, uh, window account you see that you have a multi-sig mode multi-sig mode is for multi-signature mode and it is by default deactivated so that means when you are going into the wallet integrated into the block.io there is a wallet integrated as in all blocks explorer uh, you can say okay i want to activate the multi-signature like this you are sending a transaction to someone and before that the transaction is approved you can say i want also that other person with me have to approve the transaction okay let's say i, I have two friends of mine and I, I want that they have also to approve the transaction before that i the transaction is sent so that's the multi-signature mode uh, that is deactivated by default. Uh, free CPU, 25 transaction. Blocks, Blocks.io is offering you uh, 25 transaction with uh, CPU paid by them. It is activated by default. Thank you very much, Blocks.io. And that's it for that. Then, then uh, you have this page home page where you have some indicators, an history of the price, and a RAM calculator integrated. This is for the uh, the developers when they are to develop a smart contract and they need to store some data in their smart contract. They need RAM, and here they can calculate the RAM needed. You remember there was the ERP and uh, EOS Resource Planner that I have shown you, uh, maintained by uh, EOS Nation. And there also you have um, different calculations that you can do, not only on the RAM, but that was also for the CPU and the net, the bandwidth, the net. But here it is for the RAM. It is embedded directly in uh, blocks.io. And you have a list of block producers. Okay, the different block producers. Um, you can uh, go into account and you have on, onto your account. You have all the detail of your account, you, the transaction that you have made. Okay, send, receive, classify by category. You can click a transaction, you arrive on the details, so it's very uh, intuitive. Um, you can, so account and wallet are the things that you are doing at most. Then you have uh, new things here, some, some months already, I would say, since uh, last year, um, after May 2019, there is this possibility to proxy your uh, vote to a proxy so the proxy is eos nation so you can proxy your vote to this proxy you click this button you have just to validate to approve and then you will receive automatically a reward in eos and here it's rex uh, the current apr you see the percentage okay and you see what how it is composed this uh, apr and you, you can do that directly from the blocks.io uh, block explorer okay what is very interesting with blocks.io is that you can connect blocks.io with different wallets huh? We have seen now the scatter wallet integrated in the scatter application, okay? But we have also other apps, other wallet. Encore wallet, that is a very well done wallet, okay? Uh, it is uh, for mobile and desktop, the Encore wallet. Links, okay? 
different wallet. But when you when you are on your desktop, you are you have at the at, at the minimum at the minimum you have to install Scatter because the wallet like Anchor, Lynx, uh, uh, Vombat, other wallet, it's better to use on your uh, mobile smartphone. Okay. But when you are on your desktop, at least you have the scatter installed. So that's the that's the goal. So proxy eosnation.io. In short, proxy for nation. It's a tool developed by EOS Nation and this is to enter into the decentralized finance in a way that you are rewarded when you are proxying your EOS token staked to the proxy. And this proxy for nation will then elect different block producer uh, with some criteria that EOS Nation has uh, chosen. You have just to log in uh, to, to begin the, the adventure and you see you will receive an APR of percentage uh, and this percentage is calculated, you see, uh, depending of the, um, of the amount of uh, EOS that, you, that are proxied to this proxy. This is subject to change. So this APR is calculated at the time of claim and you will have your uh, reward auto claiming every 24 hours. So you will receive automatically and you will receive what? You will receive uh, EOS, okay? You will receive REX and you will receive CPU of gray mass, gray mass fuel. So gray, gray mass is also a, a block uh, a producer and they give you some CPU in order that you are never in limit of your CPU when you are transacting with the uh, EOS uh, ecosystem, with an EOS AO base network, for example, with the EOS mainnet. So to get started is very easy. You need to have your scatter desktop already running in your application. So you have, you have already started your scatter and you can select the wallet of the scatter to connect onto the proxy eosnation.io. It's connecting. Login. And you should see appearing your account here on top right. Okay, that you are connected. Now you just have to click proxy to proxy for nation. You proxy to this proxy for nation. You click. There will be an another pop up coming. Okay, and here you have to allow this transaction, say telling that you will with your account of the EOS mainnet, you will proxy to EOS Nation. Okay, so you allow the transaction and that's it. And you will receive into your account and you will go into the blocks.io that I have showing you before, the blocks.io, you will go into your account, see if you receive every 24 hours something of the proxy for nation okay so now xnation.io another defi tool developed by um, eos nation so this tool is developed in collaboration with the bancor network the bancor service Okay, that's use the BNT smart token. It is a smart token because that allows you to transfer uh, EOS 
to BNT or BNT to EOS. And it is very interesting also when you are in the Ethereum community. And if you are in the Ethereum community, you can transfer your it, your ethers for BNT. And when you have the BNT, you can transfer the BNT to EOS. So it's a way to, to, to go from one ecosystem, blockchain ecosystem, to other blockchain ecosystem. We have Ethereum and EOS. It is based on liquidity pools. Okay. So there are some liquidity pools that are already created into the system. Okay, when we are in the Ethereum ecosystem, we have this uh, pool. Okay, when we are in the EOS ecosystem, we have this. I will show you this pool. You can exchange the smart token BNT for Vigor. Okay, that's a pool. You can create your own pool. Okay. Can create your own pool. Let's say an amount of BNT, an amount of EOS. You charge a fee or you don't charge fees, and you create pool. And you have your own liquidity pool available. Uh, you have a wallet integrated in its nation, as always, to do some uh, transfer to an another EOS account with your EOS uh, token. Okay. Okay, and here you see I am connected. I will log out to show you. I do login, and he propose me to go with different wallet to connect. I will choose my scatter that is already uh, running. I am on my desktop, so I will choose scatter. If I would be on my mobile phone, I will choose uh, the wallet EOS Links or Token Pocket or. Uh, uh, encore, this is also a, a wallet, um, or maybe I have an hardware key, Ledger Nano S. Okay, so here I am on my desktop, I will choose scatter. Okay, I accept the login and I will see my account appearing. So it's okay. Okay, so it's a tool very easy, very intuitive when you have under, when you have understood what is the, the, the goal of this tool. You have you have understood the goal of this tool. So uh, the last the last thing that I am not uh, showing you it's about stable coins. Let me show you. You have, for example, the EOS DT, that the stable coin of EOS that is managed by the Equilibrium uh, network. Okay, EOSDT, and you can convert your EOSDT for USDT. It's another another stable coin of Tether. Okay, and you see you can change the destination. You can say, okay, I will exchange my EOSDT for EOS or for USDB. USDB is the stable coin of Bancor. Okay, you see. That's stablecoin, USDT, EOSDT, USDB, USDE, Vigor, and Clear, EOS. EOS. So uh, you can do a lot of permutation, a lot of um, uh, exchange of uh, token. Okay? That's very easy to use. So, Eripedia.org is using a token that is named the IQ token. Okay? And when you arrive on this uh, website, you, are, you have all the possibility to, to read articles, to, to make some search, to explore. So, for example, I want to explore on Dan Larimer. This is an article page. And you see on the bottom of the each article you have always a link to an IPFS 
and IPFS stands for Interplanetary File System, you will have a link into the mind map explaining you what is IPFS. But IPFS is a large store of resource. Uh, that means interplanetary file system, and this is to, to store a lot of, of resources in a, in a distributed mode. And you need this IPFS because there are some video in this page, there are some uh, image. Everypedia is one of the first uh, decentralized application on EOS uh, mainnet that is using IPFS. That has beginning in that has begun in uh, 2018, because the team behind Everypedia was uh, uh, trying to go with Ethereum, and they were facing to some uh, scalability issues, and for this reason they have uh, migrated to, uh, to to EOS. So Everypedia is the decentralized version of the Wikipedia. So Wikipedia exists, and Everypedia is the decentralized version. And there are about 6 million articles in this uh, Everypedia, and, um, and all the articles of the English uh, Wikipedia are migrated into Everypedia. Okay? So you can create also your own uh, wiki. Myself, I have created uh, my wiki. So if you search for Nova Crypto, you will find something about Nova Crypto page. Voila. So you can create your own wiki. You can go into blog. Okay. Some blogs that speak about different subjects. Okay. And you can go into these blogs and interact activity you can see what is the recent activity on uh, everypedia all the people that are voting you see two minutes ago someone was uh, uh, reacting to this uh, to this uh, article etc etc you have all the activity on that you see that you can vote with your iq token so you can upvote or you can downvote. So you need to have IQ token. So how I have this IQ token here? You see, I am already connected with an EOS account here. You see this EOS account? This EOS account, how it look like? I have never uh, written an. Uh, I, this is this is not uh, an account that I have in my accounts. That's an account that I have obtained because I have used the login with social network. I will show you. I will show you how it works. I will log out of this uh, account first to show you. Log out. And when I, ha I arrive for the first time on everypedia.org and I, have, I want to edit an article or I want to vote for an article, okay, I have to log in. So I log in and I can choose to log in with my social networks, my social account, or I can choose to log in with my scatter or with uh, token pocket, so with one of my accounts. But if I have no account, if I have a regular user and I want to benefit of the experience with Everypedia that is running on EOS, I can co decide to connect with a social. So I will connect with my Google login. You see, I am login. I, re I retrieve my, my uh, EOS account. So when you connect with a social, that will create for you an EOS account automatically. And that will give you 250 IQ token. Myself, I have available uh, 70 IQ, staked 180 IQ. And for the moment, I have, uh, I have earned anything because I have not interact, interacted a lot with Everypedia. So you, you will have 250 IQ. And you will be able to use that to vote, to edit article, etc. 
okay so if you want to to buy some iq token you have to go on the nudex exchange by using your eos account to buy some iq token but when you are not in the with an eos account you can log in with a social and you obtain directly an eos account for you but there is a new function that is coming by the team of uh, everypedia it's the predict predict prediction market so predict.everypedia.org that you can also access it directly from everypedia here prediction market and in this prediction market uh, let's say you can uh, search for uh, let's say eos and you see there is a prediction here will EOS reach 12 dollars uh, in this year and if you agree uh, you can say uh, yeah uh, yes uh, or no okay you can upvote or you can downvote and uh, you will receive some IQ token if you were uh, if you were uh, right because this is using also the IQ token behind the scene So now I am on my uh, smartphone, so I will show you the SenseChat application uh, that I have already downloaded from the Play Store. I am on my Android. If you are on your iPhone, you will download from the Apple Store. So I will open the SenseChat, okay, that I have already installed. This is very easy, yeah? uh, very intuitive. So you have a wallet integrated. Where you can send token, you can send uh, sense token to some to another account, or you can send uh, EOS token to another account. So the two possibilities: sense or EOS. You will earn sense token when you are doing uh, something into this uh, sense chat. Let's say you are referring to a friend the the sense chat app. You will earn sense sense token. Um, okay, um, you have this wallet integrated. This is very uh, useful. Uh, you have a chat integrated where you can chat with your uh, contact that you have into your uh, your application, and you are also able to do some uh, video calls uh, with this with with these apps. So for the moment, this sense chat is the version. Uh, since the 2019 uh, last year and uh, there will be a new version coming with a group video call uh, gene group you will be able to create your own groups to add your own contacts um, yeah and it is very secure uh, it is very filtered because you will be able to to choose who is in your group who is not uh, you will have some tags on contacts where you will see okay this contact is uh, approved this contact is uh, uh, already filtered we know that this contact is a real person a, a real user um, sense chat uh, this is one of the first messaging app that was developed by uh, shios uh, team um, they have developed this uh, same chat at the beginning that was with uh, people of Ethereum to onboard the uh, Ethereum users and then they have chose to migrate to the EOS ecosystem because for the scalability for the for the high throughput and they have developed also a teleportation protocol to onboard uh, ERC20 token into the um, into EOS token okay if you go back to my uh, last video uh, of uh, 23rd april 23rd april 23rd you will have uh, an explanation on on this so send chat is still um, not yet the new version the new version will come this july august i don't know exactly the the, the correct date so you have just to go on on the website of send chat uh, to uh, have your early uh, access okay i will go into the play store and i will uh, i will 
search for Wombat. Voilà. So it is installed, you just have to open. And now, what you have to do is to accept the general condition and you will sign in with one of your social. It's very I choose for one of my accounts. I have to securize with a PIN code, standard process. But normally, when it is the first time, you should see here, instead of key and accounts, create EOS account. And when you click create EOS account, you will, you will have really an EOS account. Myself, I have already done the process. So here it is written keys and account because I have already created. So I have created an EOS account in the past here. You see, that's mine. This is not of Wombat. This is my account, managed by my key, private key and my public key. Okay. So now I have an account. Okay, perfect. But I am in the wallet. I go in wallet, and you see I have zero balance. Okay. So now the question is, how do you charge? How do you cash in some uh, EOS? Very easy. You make, you do cash in. And Vombat is partnered with MoonPay and Crypto Locali. That's two solutions very elegant into the EOS ecosystem. Crypto Locali is very well known. You can pay in fiat currency and you receive EOS and you are working with other people into the EOS ecosystem. In peer-to-peer, -peer, you are working with them. Or you have the MoonPay getaway where you can pay with your credit card and you obtain yours. So you have the, the choice. And when it is done, your account will show some uh, EOS here and you will be able to begin the journey. So Vombat, nice wallet, very easy to use and uh, yeah. So now I will show you what proof. This is a plugin that you have to install on your uh, WordPress uh, administration console. When it is done, you have your WordPress plugin installed for your uh, WordPress website. Okay, and I will show you what what it means to timestamp your content with the WordPress. So when you do a page into your uh, website with WordPress, you can decide if you want to. Uh, add to the word proof. So for example, this page here, on the bottom of the page, you have a link. View this content's word proof timestamp certificate. Okay, I click on it. Okay. And I can go to verify the fingerprint of this content. So I can view the input of this timestamp. Okay, I click. And I see that my first timestamp for this page was the at this particular date, okay, at this particular time. Okay. Now I want to do a timestamp check. What does it mean? You have to get the raw content that is here. That's the code of the page, HTML. Okay, you take you take all the the, this, this raw content you put in your clipboard okay you do a copy of that and you go in timestamp check and in timestamp check you put your raw content here you have also to put the hash of the of this uh, timestamp so you can go on the blockchain, view on the blockchain. You arrive in blo you arrive in blocks.io. You have the hash here. You get this hash. Put in your clipboard. Copy copy. I was here. So I put the hash. That's the hash of this. HTML that was timestamped, I compare the hash 
the hash you put in and the generate hash are identical. That means no one has changed something. Okay. My 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 uh, content was not tempered. Was not. Uh, it is proof. My and now I will go in my website in my admin, and I will change this page resource. Okay. Let me do just a little change. Okay. So the page is up to date. So now my content is, is updated. And if I take this content, that's the new content, this content, and I put in the timestamp check here, with the hash that was of the first time, and I compare the hash, he say the hash you put in, so here, and the generated hash from that are not the same with this hash that was already in the blockchain. So the content you are reading may be outdated or tempered. Okay? So that's a good... Uh, uh, way to check if your content was not tempered and it is also a good way to have your content timestamped onto the blockchain like this you, you can prove uh, prove that is you the owner of this content okay and you have an history of what you what, what you do okay so to install the word proof plugin it's very easy you just have to go in your wordpress uh, admin uh, in the plugins and install and you check for word proof okay you find word proof timestamp you select and you install the plugin it's very easy when the plugin is installed you should see in your WordPress administration appearing here a new uh, plugin so WordProof uh, and you can change all what you need to change there is a manual this is very well done this is very explained this is not complicated to use Thanks, Patrick. Pleasure being here. I will benefit of the presence of someone in the community, not in the EOS community, but in the blockchain community as a whole family. And uh, I have the pleasure to, to welcome Pavel Jakovlev. Uh, last year, in 2019, in May, in the official event uh, AI and Blockchain Summit in Malta, and uh, beside the events, Pavel was organizing also an event about uh, CVVC, Crypto Valley Labs, and to meet future startups to incubate in Zug. And I was not so aware of, of these uh, uh, possibilities. And uh, after that, uh, he was inviting me in the Crypto Valley Week to present about the EOSIO protocol. And now my question begins. So uh, obviously, what is the what is CV Labs? Sure. And um, and again, thank you for having me, Patrick. And and indeed, our relationship goes back to May last year. And you, you you came to our meetup, and you did a bit of filming. I remember that clearly. And and you asked me, you know, is would it be possible to organize something at CV Labs? And I said, of course, whenever whenever you want to organize something, just come. And that relationship we still have we still ma maintain and you organized a couple of workshops at cv labs uh, on behalf of es nation and you came to organize also um, a learning session for our startups during the incubation so that has been going quite well to my understanding and what is cv labs um cv labs or crypto valley labs um, effectively is what we call an ecosystem builder Right, it's an it's an entity with a sole purpose to develop the ecosystem, the local ecosystem in Switzerland, and now we're also trying to develop other ecosystems 
in uh, Dubai, we're also looking at Asia, we're looking at Latin America, and we have a, a small enclave in Baduz. Because most of your viewers would know that Liechtenstein is also a, a, a crypto country nation. Or there's also a CCA or a crypto country association. So it's a, it's a, it's a small community. But it's a, it's quite a robust one, and also what's exciting over there specifically is the government is on the side of the industry, and they have a dedicated law called the Blockchain Act. So this is one of the reasons why CV Labs is there. But maybe to take a, a step back and explain what CV Labs does, um, plain vanilla stuff uh, is is a real estate model. So we offer co-working um, and private offices for blockchain related companies so you can either be a startup that's building something on blockchain or you can provide services to blockchain startups you can have a place uh with us uh, in cv labs and as i mentioned already we have the main one the genesis the genesis hub so to say is in Zug, and then we also have Liechtenstein. we now have dubai and a few more are opening um, at some point in the next two three years in addition to real estate, we also offer different services. Uh, we organize events either by ourselves um, or we partner up with other people or we can organize events as a turnkey solution for companies. So when they come to us and they say, hey, we'd like to have more visibility within the community, we'd like to organize a meetup, we say, sure, no problem, we can do that. We reach out to our community, we invite people and we do the whole event. Uh, we also offer uh, marketing or community engagement services, as we call it. So, again, this is all about positioning. If, if you're a new company that just landed um, on the shore of, of Crypto Valley and you're trying to break in into the community, we can do different content marketing strategies, but we can position you through some of our social media tools. We can promote you. Obviously, we'll do some of the matchmaking for you. So whatever you need, we're here to help. Uh, then the other thing what we do is incubation. Uh, this is done in conjunction with CVVC. So CVVC is the parent company of CV Labs. It's also a venture capital company. Um, and what CVVC does is it invests uh, capital into startups that come then to CV Labs for a CV Labs incubation program. We've hosted two of these programs so far. Each of these programs lasted around uh, 12 weeks. And we're looking to host another one in September, October, depending how things will go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, first question. Always accurate. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. The second question that I have, uh, it's what you think about the EOS ecosystem uh, in the blockchain ecosystem as a whole? Uh, what do you think about this uh, EOS ecosystem? My knowledge is it's one of the top 10, if not top 5, um, projects as such or ecosystems that is backed by um, a protocol, right? A multi-chain um, concoction, so to say, ecosystem. Um, it's, it's one of the few that actually raised capital. Uh, I think it, the raise was, correct me if I'm wrong, in 16 or 17. Uh, yeah, the, 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 the ICO was starting in 2017. 17, exactly. Uh, terminated uh, in uh, June 2018, and they have raised four billion. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And it's yeah. so it's one of the largest ICOs ever recorded, and you know it's 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 also um, it's also great to see that the funds that have been raised are actually going into deployment. It's it's great to see that the funds are going back to the community. And also, um, I'm quite excited about DAOs, and I think EOS uh, is the, the prime example of how an effective DAO is functioning. Uh, the fact that, you know, the block completely separated itself, the founders have completely separated themselves from the overall yeah. protocol, and giving power to the community, allowing yeah. the community to build, allowing community to take critical decisions into, you know, where community or where development should go, I think this is this is quite exciting. And then, obviously, uh, so middleware, middle layer, it's it's exactly where my thoughts, uh, blockchain technology should actually go. Yeah, it should be some kind of, you know, again, middle layer for for 
for for uh, lack of, of better words, that just it connects multiple uh, systems together and is there and plays to its strengths, which are obviously uh, decentralization, uh, transparency, all of yeah. the time stamping, smart contracts, all of that stuff. And it it shouldn't be visible for a regular person, but mm -hmm. it should execute um, fast, efficiently, and, and yeah, transparently. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the online services and the decentralized finance that is also a, a trend uh, this year, maybe already end of the last year? Uh, it's about decentralized finance, so DeFi in short. What, what is your uh, thought on, on this uh, domain? So let's, let's unpack this. So I, I think the first thing is um, online. Um, everything online that's happening, yeah, yeah, online services, everything that's happening online these days. I think, um, on one hand, I am for it. I like the fact that we are moving to online, but at the same time, I feel like because of the COVID 19 um, pandemic, everybody got a tiny little bit too, too, it, it, it was a tiny little bit too much for people, and um, everybody went, you know, rushed to this. So I think now we're seeing this kind of explosion, which at some point will level out and we will find a sustainable solution in terms of offering services online. I'm still looking for a solution that enables people to participate in groups because even things like Zoom, right? You can have, you know, multiple people on a call, but people, it's still one person talking. There's no collaboration happening as such. There's no... Exactly. And that's, and that's a bit of a problem. So I'm looking for solutions that would be able to somehow... And we are, that. and that's good that you, that you mentioned uh, this point because that's come me uh, to, uh, to something. It's SenseChat. SenseChat is a secure messaging tool and video messaging, totally peer-to-peer. -to -peer, and it is uh, provided by... Um, an actor in the EOS ecosystem. They are coming in uh, July, August, this tool. And we have the coming voice, the coming voice in yeah. July 4. So thanks to, to this uh, to the social uh, platform, we will be able to have a real group of people, no fake bot, no um, fake account. We will have a real human in the, in the game. And you as a uh, civil labs, you can really, for sure, create a group, mm -hmm. uh, CV Labs on voice. Why not? Or on Sense Chat. Myself, Nova Crypto, it's clear. I will create a, a group uh, there because I want to have in this group real people, real human to engage with them. So uh, exactly, exactly. You say we are in uh, COVID. Now it's obvious that we have to work maybe more online but at the same time we have to to benefit to have some uh, real connection and to maximize this connection we need some interactivity uh, and the uh, zoom zoom is a good tool but we know that there are some uh, security uh, lack uh, there was some data that were, that were uh, providing to to um, facebook and uh, we want to be totally decentralized and it when we can use peer-to-peer -peer, uh, tool such as SenseChat or the voice social platform that will come in on top of the EOS ecosystem, that will give a reason why uh, we are all in this uh, ecosystem. Yeah. So the second part of the question, yeah. DeFi, uh, DeFi. Uh, DeFi, yeah, what you... Yeah, DeFi, DeFi is definitely an interesting trend. Um, and I think on the technology level, we, we're either getting there or we're already there. Um, I think that the, the real question that we need to be asking ourselves is the, is the regulation there? Uh, are the big actors, uh, the large financial institutions, will they adopt uh, DeFi? Do they see value in that? Can they actually utilize the tools? Mm -hmm. Or maybe even a different question, when would they get on board? Right, because we can create the most exciting products, but if there is very little adoption, there is very little product market fit, then no matter how great that solution is, unfortunately, it's not taking off. 
And again, I think on the technological level, it's great. Everything, all of the different applications that I've seen from proof of invoicing to uh, you know, proof of payments and timestamping, everything on that stuff is great. Phenomenal tech stack, transparent, trustless, you know, it, it, it creates efficiencies, eliminates um, you know, different actors in the chain that don't necessarily need to be there. Exactly. But again, you know, I think, I think it's more, so one of the stopping, stopping stones for, uh, not, yeah. Mm. Issues in the U S for example, when it comes to DeFi is regulation. As always, as always. Exactly. So, so we need to figure that part out in addition to tech, unfortunately, tech, tech is happening. Tech is progress and that will keep happening. But then we also need to work with other parts and other functions within the society, within the system to make sure that that tech is being adopted. Yeah, exactly. To the audience, it's clear that more it is easy to onboard and there is no friction with the government, better it is. For example, voice, they, they, they were in US, the first beta was in US for voice, and they, they were in discussion with the, with the SEC in the US, and they have, have a good discussion with them, and the SEC was recognizing EOS ecosystem uh, to uh, Block One, the, the, the company behind the, the EOS ecosystem, the software company, for voice. That's a good sign. Uh, and there will come others, I, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, so when the government also has a clue in the game and can uh, accept this decentralized finance coming, it's also good. But at the same time, we want to be independent of the intermediaries. We want to have some disintermediation. So uh, for example, in the de decentralized web that we are creating, we, are, we have the, some actors and those actors are the developers, the marketers and the operators and uh, the other actors, as Pavel said, the, the government or other uh, maybe not, um, not uh, necessary uh, intermediaries, we don't want, but the government will be all, always have a, some, some role uh, when we are not liking that or that we are not liking or we are liking, there will always be a, a bit. So um, yeah. Totally decentralizing, decentralization is, is not the role. The role is to have a good distribution of the, of the, of the values. Yeah, finish on this uh, nice uh, words, I think. And what I want to do, what can I say to finish also is, uh, it's clear that I will continue the adventure with uh, Crypto Valley uh, in Switzerland, uh, because I am based in Switzerland. First reason, second reason, because I, I love what you are doing with the, the startups, Thank you. and it's and it's clear that I want if we have the possibility to be more in uh, contact, not too too much social di distancing, uh, to be uh, once again in uh, Crypto Valley Labs in Sug doing a meetup where I was uh, doing before, yep. and or why not uh, an online um, meetup that we can organize together. And uh, I thank you for uh, your venue today, Pavel. Thank you very much. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Pavel. Cheers. Bye bye bye. So, thank you very much, uh, Eyal, to be here with us. My pleasure. What role plays the, the Bancor network in the decentralized finance? So uh, quite a big role because the uh, Bancor network was the first uh, decentralized service by a very uh, large gap. Uh, I think it was a few months uh, after we launched Bancor in uh, 2017 that um, MakerDAO uh, launched essentially the second the DeFi service uh, with, with MakerDAO. And... Um, I think that what, what we brought to the table was one of the core solutions for uh, financial um, demands that we can all see and, and look in the 
uh, old world, we can see what are the financial instruments that people need. And the most basic one, I would say, is, um, is liquidity, is the ability to convert one asset to another. And we had a way to do that in the real world with uh, stock exchanges and bid and ask. And we kind of migrated that to the blockchain, just like we migrated the uh, uh, Encyclopedia Britannica to the internet, only to discover that a better model can work on the internet in the form of Wikipedia. And I think Bancor is showing that you don't need to migrate that. And, you know, slowly, obviously, that's a long process, but you can actually have better liquidity through smart contracts that are open and, and, and transparent and aggregate liquidity uh, between uh, m many providers. So this is kind of the vision that we brought to the table, which is liquidity through smart contracts. And I think MakerDAO uh, brought uh, solutions to the need of uh, stability, stable tokens, which is a very important instrument when you don't want to uh, speculate on anything, if you will. You just want to hold a, a stable value uh, that is exactly. measured, by the way, with the cost of labor. So since we use money to exchange labor, so I'm holding my assets in a form that is stable relative to the cost of labor. So I can, you know, I, I can get for that money the same amount of labor next year as I would this year. And that's kind of the, the meaning of stable coin. And then, and, and, and the last thing was, you know, lending. Lending is also a very important financial tool. And there are many, you know, some others like synthetics, uh, uh, synthetic assets and, and, and some additional financial instrument. But I think the most basic ones uh, that we see really uh, thrive in the DeFi space are the liquidity related services and stability related services and lending. Uh, related services yeah. and I think that's kind of the the core of every financial system and you know we're very happy to be a part of that history and I think the Bancor network is uh, really the backbone of of uh, all the solution that you are building on top you have uh, launched uh, um, a new uh, framework or getaway or uh, what is what what is the the the, the problem that D Web is uh, solving? The problem that we had in the nineties with software monopolies. So we had Microsoft and Oracles and uh, Oracle and and, and Netware, and, and it was it was clear that no one would be able to beat Microsoft. Just got stronger and stronger because it had a monopoly on closed source uh, software. And the solution for that was not another company to be able to compete with Microsoft because that was impossible and many tried. The only solution that actually worked is a framework that enabled ecosystems to create software together rather than a single company. And that framework was called open source. And when it came out, people were like, didn't understand it, thought it was stupid, thought it was pointless. But what actually happened in the last 20 years that open source versions have replaced all major software on all major category on a browser and OS and the, obviously the backend is completely open source. It wouldn't be able even to scale otherwise. The internet wouldn't scale without open source that the entire world maintain. And, and, and that was software. But since then, since we had the internet that enabled us to do open source, now, now people not using software anymore. Everyone's using online services and we back to square one. We have huge online service monopolies, just like in the nineties. And there's, you cannot even imagine someone who built a social network that will beat Facebook or a search engine that, that beat Google. And all the, the, the online services are complete and, and, and total monopolies. And, and what DWeb is doing is basically the same thing. It enables ecosystems to offer online services, just like ecosystem were able to build software. Now, the difference between, between offering software and, and a service is, first of all, that software has no uh, uh, overhead cost. You, you can, it's just IP. You can you know, copy it as much as you want. Well, online services actually have ongoing costs to run it, to have the service running. 
and uh, so so th that's different so there's need to be some kind of a more building economical um, layer into that solution and the other solution that that uh, you, you actually need is a single store of data which is what we didn't have when we first created the decentralized online services when the internet started they created the email which survived it's the only decentralized service that survived to this very day but news groups and an irc the instant messaging did not have the same fortune and no one in, you know uh, uh, seem to be using them these days uh, other than some i guess fringe groups but but every all that action is happening on uh, Facebook groups, on Reddit, in discussion groups, and and uh, you know happening on on WhatsApp and Messenger. When it comes to instant messaging, it's all proprietary platforms, not talking to each other. Uh, have very small incentive to even improve because they are uh, in in large extent monopolies in in, in their own domain, if, if you will. Uh, and 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 this is what D-Web is coming to fix because because now we have the technology that would be very helpful back then. We have it now. I mean, just imagine if we had blockchain. By the time we built email, you can add a feature yeah. to email that if you're sending me email for the first time, please send me ten cents just for the first time. You would have no spam in the world ever, just for charging ten cents per first time email. And 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 you know the same. And, and, and billions were invested in, in fighting spam and, and you know it's still a problem and not to mention phishing and security so so it would be a much better system if there was ability to send dollars as easy as it, it is to send bits and and if there was an ability to have a, a shared data store that every email provider in the world can you know read and write from that would make it a very different challenge to build decentralized services. And this is basically what we're doing at DWeb today. We're saying, now we have the tool, they're scalable, they can support a lot of users. You know, people have been building them for 10 years. Now we can actually offer decentralized services where we, we, we separate the ecosystem to three different roles, main roles, which is the developers, like what we do, we build the software, but we just publish the software doesn't even need to be open source it, you know it's, it's 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 a software that anyone can take and operate on their servers and become an operator and, exactly. and the operator is like the devops they have a diffuse account and an eos account and you know and and, and firebase and, and all that's actually very simple to be an operator but but mm -hmm. you know they they run the machines but they we have another um a role which is uh, i think the most most challenging one which is the marketer the marketer is, is, is anyone that can get access to users. Maybe someone with a great audience, you know, to begin with. Maybe something, someone that thinks he can offer something uh, interesting on top of that. And, and the marketers uh, are essentially, the, you know, they have the domain to which the user goes to, to access the service. And each marketer chooses the operator based on how much they charge. The operators choose the software based on how much the software charges and everyone charges royalty from the revenue that is generated by the service and it's a free market so you know developers can charge as much as they want and and the operator can charge as much as they want as well in marketer and you know people compete with each other and provide value and this is what you don't have is facebook i cannot provide a better facebook group uh, exactly. module and if everyone uses it then i make money so no one have any incentive to improve facebook and and exactly. that's you know that that's the reason those services are pretty much stuck in the same place and and have essentially no incentive to improve and, and which is the problem with every monopoly including the government <laughs> we see those problems <laughs> around now yeah, yeah. government have no incentive to improve because they are monopolies and that's what you get look at the world governments that's let's come me to the question uh that's make i think uh, a glue uh that's the liquid app it's, it's a second uh trustless layer on top of the eos ecosystem and it is a middleware uh would be the benefit of the web as a getaway as a framework to be connected uh, let's say that the, the, the liquid apps uh, middleware layer will connect 
with the D-Web? What could be the, the real benefit for, uh, for uh, D-Web? The main benefits um, that, that we can think of, the, the, the first one, I think the most important one is that if, if these kind of services are to scale, then there are going to be a lot of demand for RAM uh, exactly. for the smart contracts. And when you're talking about consumers, consumers especially are services that you have many, many users and you're making very little money from every user, so you're able to maintain yourself. So if you have to pay RAM for each user in a consumer application, you're not gonna be able to make money. And, and, and you know, what, what VRAM enables is really using uh, so much less RAM with that is it's, it's exactly even, uh, it's even not 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 a possibility if you're doing you know some smaller contract maybe decentralized exchange something for you know maybe a thousand users will do maybe you know you you can you can handle the cost but but if you're yeah. building something for hundreds of thousands and millions of users then then it's a must and 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 also even when you talk about cpu cost and stuff like that uh you could you could uh, use a lot of um, you know sister chains in order to store all the data that is uh, the, the kind of the ledger of the D-Web application. So if it's a transaction that is not moving money, which is many of the transactions are not moving man money. If you write a new post, if you comment, if you're doing some, something like that, you're not moving money. Uh, it doesn't need to be on mainnet, that particular event. That could use a sister chain, uh, something with yeah. liquid change and, and and, and you know that that's something that is also could be crucial for scalability. So you don't need to scale on the single EOS. You can actually scale sideways and just keep the money movement transactions on the EOS. But everything else doesn't need to happen there. So many exchanges and Coinbase and all that are connected to EOS mainnet, and that is its main benefit: the liquidity networks that voilà. are uh, created between it and, and all the the fiat. But for everything else, almost you can use it sister chain because they achieve the same openness, uh, permissionless transparency that you will get from using EOS. The EOS mainnet like this uh, stay as it should be the settlement layer mm -hmm. and uh, the role that the EOS mainnet normally should, should play in this EOS ecosystem. It's like a settlement layer, an, auditability, an auditable layer. And I think that the liquid chain or uh, in liquid apps are only communicating with the EOS mainnet when it is uh, needed for auditability and uh, proof on chain. Yeah, so I agree. And, 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 and this is just one reason. The second reason is mm -hmm. that right now, uh, every operator uh, can use a Google Firebase or maybe, you know, we could use uh, Amazon because yeah. it's very easy to become an operator. However, uh, it means that there is this infrastructure, uh, I'm talking about hardware infrastructure layer in the yeah. D-Web stack that is still centralized because they're not many providers. Yeah. Now it's not so um, critical when you're small and just beginning, small, yeah. Yeah. but yeah. as you grow, you don't want your entire business to be based on, on, on entire networks and services that compete with Amazon yes. and uh, Face and, and Google, uh, yes. you don't want them to be hosting their service on uh, to be dependent on on them for scaling. And with that, Liquid Apps have many many interesting um, solution uh, that that enables, like Liquid Docker, that enables to essentially uh, create a virtual service on with the DSP network, a virtual server that you can use in the same way. Uh, as, as you use a least computer on Amazon and, and, and yeah exactly and, and, and I think and, and that would enable us to decentralize that whole level of the network so this is something I'm looking forward to yeah, the hardware infrastructure layer because not just two providers it's anyone can be a provider anyone can be a DSP and and, and I believe that the future uh, it would look yeah. more like that um, and yeah, is the DSP can this DSP be onboarded to use also the web uh, to, to reuse the same um, 
let's say, the same space? The answer is yes, because, you know, the yeah. web would use, you know, standard DSP services, just like anyone mm -hmm. else. And, and a DSP uh, for that, that is serving the web would be no different than anyone else. And also we see today that a lot of the DAP network DSPs are experimenting with becoming D-Web operators because it's the same kind of proficiency. It's the proficiency in running servers in DevOps, uh, which is what those people knows to, know to do really, really well. It's challenging. And in a blockchain-based ecosystem, you yeah. get uh, paid uh, if you do that well. Like, uh, uh, yeah. Mac producers would get paid for maintaining it's servers and, yeah. and, 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 and doing that well and with technical proficiency and um, obviously, um, you know, miners in, in Bitcoin and, and Ethereum, you know, they, so it's not a new model in that way. And I think, I think this, is, this is probably part of the whole crypto economics that you need people to run servers so you need to create uh, an incentive for them to do that. Yeah. And while uh, blockchains like uh, Bitcoin or, or, or Ethereum are doing that by issuing a token uh, and, and, and giving those people the new supply that has been issued, with DWeb, what's done is that every transaction is going through the royalty distribution engine which distributes it to the developer as well as the uh, operator that operates it and, 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 and to the marketer. So all the stakeholders are getting paid when revenue is generated through a stable coin. So they don't, there's no token that needs to be issued. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that. So I think that now that we speak, we have about three, uh, uh, operator on the web or maybe four. Uh, the, the, the function that we have in the web are very interesting. That's the board. Uh, you can have a, like a forum where you do your, um, your question. Um, the, 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 the point also is you can create a user generated token on the web. It's a liquidity token. Um, and you, that is backed by uh, USDB. So that's the stable coin of, uh, of, uh, of Bancor. That's the beauty. At the end, uh, the web, uh, for the stand that we are now, it's very easy to use. An only user has to, to come, he can uh, use a payment getaway like MoonPay and uh, Elastum. It's mm -hmm. uh, very well um, uh, thinked. Uh, and there is a lot of uh, brainstorming behind that because you have such a lot of uh, experience in the field uh, with all that we you 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 have uh, doing in the past um, i will put all the link on you in order that the people that doesn't know uh, ai alert have, have a good um, background on you uh, here was not the point here was to go straight to the question and after that the people can uh, make their own uh, research Go on dweb.io, go on dweb.eosnation.io, go on the different operator and, and test. I think we have made the, the tour. You, do you want to, to add something for the audience? Do you want to, to say something more? Um, you know, we just uh, launched, uh, one of our partners just launched uh, dplatform.network uh, which is a nice uh, destination that is using dweb is uh, using it for uh, anti-censorship uh, uh, media i think it's a very hot topic check it out exactly the platform net uh, network yeah exactly uh, with the d board the discussion board yeah uh, this is totally new and uh, i enjoy to to see the the evolution i am totally involved in this and uh, it's clear that I will be um, always uh, behind and to, 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 to build on that. So thank you very much, Eyal. Thank you very much for your time. My pleasure.
this is a framework, okay? You have different roles on this uh, platform. You have developers, operators, marketers, okay? Very clear. Uh, EOS Nation is one of the operators. You have other operators. You have marketers. And for example, myself, I am a developer. It's clear. I am in, on the side of the developer, but I do also a little bit marketing. But seeing by the web, I am a developer, okay? If I go on dweb.eosnation.io, I arrive on the operator eosnation.io on dweb. And here you, are a you have a list of available tokens. You have several uh, people that I have that I, that I have created a token. For example, dash. EOS.io, it's a partner of uh, Nova Crypto. They have also a platform. They are based in Deutschland, Germany, uh, Austria, and also uh, Switzerland. So myself, I am based in Switzerland, so I have partnered with Dash. Uh, and let me show you how it works. So we have each our token, myself included. Uh, okay, you have everything EOS also. Shout out to the goal. He has also his uh, token, Novusphere, Jack. Shout out to you. So we have each, we have our uh, token, and it is a token utility token, and it is created on this D web. Behind that's used the Bancor network, the Bancor service, okay, and it is totally liquid from the first day. So when you are interested by someone, you, you go on his uh, token to click, okay? And you see in this token, you see the price of the token, okay? The token is named here, DAR, DASH. You can buy the token. If you click on buy the token, you can buy the token by using Payment getaway such as MoonPay, Elastum, or you can do an EOS transfer. You can choose to do an EOS transfer, for example, and it is written here that you have to send EOS to this address, so to this account, dweb.eosn, and this is the smart contract of EOS Nation, and you have to put in the memo this. And you send the amount that you want to send. If you want to send for one uh, EOS, uh, send for one EOS. Uh, if you want to, to send for 10 EOS, why not? So you do exactly what you want. Let me show you how it will work because it is not yet totally finished. Uh, I will put a D-Web user and I try with my account Boy service, the service. He will do the check of the account. You have access to our service, so it's working. So now, so now let me show you some basics how to interact with a smart contract uh, with the curl uh, curl it's a tool that is available for uh, uh, multi-platform multi os so i am based myself on uh, windows so i will show you with the windows operating system okay so i will show you that so i am in a windows uh, uh, command line so dos command line and uh, I have already installed my curl. My curl. It's available anywhere. I can do curl here. I can change of, of uh, drive, and I do curl here. It is uh, recognized. So my curl is installed in the. Okay, it is here. Uh, if you want that it is available everywhere, you have to change the pass to add to the pass the dislocation so you do just this command okay you add a semicolon 
and you had your pass. Let's do a little test command. So let's say we do curl, then we give a API endpoint of EOS Nation, for example. Okay, and we say I want to call the RPC, the remote procedure call, the, the procedure get underscore info. And that's written a JSON text. It's illisible, you, you agree, so you can redirect in a file. D get info dot txt. Okay, now I will open the file with the notepad command. Okay, I do a copy of all this text and I go on a website and I search for a formatter JSON formatter okay perfect and I will paste my text I will do process Okay, it's a better view. Huh? We agree it's a better view to see the thing. So you are now. Let me show you a command that is behind my website to interact with the dweb.us and smart contract. Okay. Okay. Here I have a command. But this command is a little bit different. I call get table rows. And I go in the, the account dweb.eosn. That's the smart contract indeed. I go in the table that's, that is named users. And I ask for the scope dweb.eosn. So for the scope EOS Nation, give me all the users and put that in a file. So I take this. I have this, this uh, tool that let me combine in a script PHP curl command. So I go on this website, I just have to give the script, the, the curl command here, and the PHP code will appear here. When you have the PHP code, you get it this code for you, and you make some adaptation. So it's basically what I am doing with my website and that I am continuing to do. Okay. So now, how to know which table are in a smart contract? You go on block.io slash account slash the name of your account, dweb.eosn. There is a tab here, a section, contract. You click here. And here you have the different tables that are available into the into this smart contract. So for example, the table users. Okay, you click the table users. Okay, you have to give a scope. The scope is the name of the smart contract. And you obtain the list of the users. Okay, very fantastic uh, tool, this uh, blocks.io for that. Okay, you have different tables. So now what I want to show you is how you can interact with a NeoSIO network directly from your uh, browser, with, from your page in your browser. Okay, here I have an HTML page on my website you see okay and what do this page it is connecting to an EOSIO network by using EOS JavaScript okay and here if I refresh the page okay I receive 
What is the last irreversible block on the jungle testnet by CryptoLion? Jungle 2 testnet. This is a testnet, and I refresh this page to see other block producer coming. Okay? You see here, producer. So if I do F5, you see that's change. That's change. Not yet. Not yet. Now yes. Iosayo Brazil. Iosayo Brazil. Ios Cafe. Etc. So how it is made? You can go in the source code of this page. And you see the code. Okay, if you are interested to see the code, you have the code. So basically, we connect to the API of CryptoLion to the JSON RPC. So it's to, 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 to be connected with the remote procedure calls. And here we have a function main, that is the entry print. This is an asynchronous function that is constantly uh, running and I do a console log of the last irreversible block num. Okay, okay. EOSIO is a wonderful world of libraries, exactly, because we have this EOS uh, JavaScript. Okay, so to install this EOS JavaScript, there is a guide here. I am myself based on Windows, so I have described how to install the browser web distribution for the Windows operating system for the EOS JavaScript. So you have just to follow these, these steps and you will be able to install EOS JavaScript for your environment. And for Windows, there are some little things to, 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 to know. Uh, you have to add to, to the past the, your installation of EOS JavaScript and yeah. That's a little guide, and you have the link into the mind map. So that's on my website, EOS Blockchain Switzerland.ch slash dev slash EOS GIS.html. So thank you very much to have watching this uh, entire EOS IO Swiss workshop, June 23rd. Uh, the video will be available on YouTube in a couple of uh, days. You will be uh, totally uh, informed if you are going in my youtube channel nova crypto uh, you will find on youtube nova crypto ltd you go into the channel you subscribe to the channel and uh, you will smash the notification and you will have the, the, the video coming um, of this workshop and you will have into the below description of the video you will have a link a web link that you can go into a mind map with all the links of this presentation with all the topics that we have covered and you have access also to the last video of the april 23rd that was the introduction uh, on the eos uh, ecosystem the eos io uh, protocol and the smart contract platform uh, that was an introduction, two hours also, and very uh, uh, complete. Uh, today, that was more in uh, focus on the interviews with my guests and also on the hands on uh, example. And the next workshop will be uh, August 23rd, and there will be also three guests. I have already some. Uh, guests uh, in mind uh, the subject it's a little early to, to tell you because that's evolved every very fast the, the US ecosystem this is for this reason I do each and every two months so I thank you very much for your time your patience uh, your uh, patience also and uh, see you soon bye bye